everybody. So I thought I would start this year with a reflective video because I think it is crucial to start the year having reflected on who we are, who we want to be, where we are and how to get there. This video is perhaps a bit more reflective on my side because as you shall see in perhaps the following video my year did not start on a normal high note on everything but i chose to rather look at it and think what could be the lesson that god is trying to to show me even in this season you see as you look at me on the video I'm rebuilding my garden because as I went on holiday to see the family, things got literally ruined. The weather and the fact that, well, I'm not the one that was doing the garden and yeah. And so that's a downer, especially if you're living a life where you eat mostly from your garden because you want your garden to produce as much as possible. But you see, as I stood there and I looked at my garden and I wondered, Lord, where do I start? Right there was the lesson for me. You see, in the book of Jeremiah twenty nine thirteen, the Lord says, You will seek me and you will find me if you seek me with all of your heart. And so I realized that sometimes we look at situations in terms of what do I do or how much can I do or who can I call? And we forget to call on the one who says if we seek him, we will find him. If we seek him with all of our heart and God cares even about the small trivial things like a garden God truly cares he really does care and so I said to myself what is God trying to show me and right there I learned I learned something crucial that Normally we think of the new year as something that should start on a very high note and you're crushing your goals and you're going for all the things that you wanted to do. But sometimes the new year is about literally starting over the very things that you were doing and doing them better this time. See, starting over my garden has showed me that it's okay to rebuild. That it's okay to go back to a friendship that was once good, but because of distance and and this and that, things kind of, you know, moved sideways. It's okay to reconcile for as long as it does not harm either of you in any way, right? But then I... As a, as a homemaker, as a mother, as a wife, God really was showing me that so often I will have to redo something that I've done, especially as a mother. I mean, I was blessed with a toddler that has energy times 11. Sometimes you clean the kitchen and she messes it up and and you have to start all over again. And obviously it's not nice, right? Because you want to do something once and it's done for good and you sit there and you just look at your work and, and be happy, right? But then I think about God. I think about Jesus Christ and what he accomplished for us at the cross. And I realize God is always starting over with me. I... I make all of this 
these choices to say i'm not gonna do this anymore or i'm living this this way and then somewhere along the lines i mess it up right guess what god is always willing to start all over with me and if god is willing to start all over with me surely i can start all over with my garden with my baby with my husband right you see one thing i've learned is that most times we are unwilling to restart to redo simply because of pride our pride won't let us and as a christian mother as a christian homemaker i'm slowly learning that there is no way pride must have a space in my life if anything it is one thing that should not be named next to me pride hinders us from ministry i mean making my home is a ministry loving my husband well and according to what the lord wants from me is a ministry right and so if my pride hinders me from being forgiving from from being a person that is willing to start all over on the same thing again then it means i'm skimping on ministry it means my pride has come between me and god because if i am not working in the way that the lord wants me to work in the way that he has showed me in his word because the word of god says we ought to uh, to work as unto the lord and not unto man right and so how i treat my husband how i treat my my child how i treat my garden how i treat my chickens i ought to do it as though i'm doing it for god and you ask yourself that would god be okay with me if i stand here and throw my hands in the air because there's so many weeds in the garden and you know there's so many crops that were damaged that need to be pulled out and i'm just like you know what i can't do this anymore would god be pleased would he treat me in the same way you know and the answer is no god is always calling us to himself he says come let us reason together though your sins be red as scarlet right they shall be white as snow he says even after i have sinned i must just come to him and we reason together that's that's a call to start over and so as i am working on my goals as as i am thinking about the things that god wants me to do this year top most of my list is to make sure that i start over on the important things on the things that sometimes i don't want to do because that's exactly where god would have me and that's exactly where my blessing lies you know i mean hey i'm starting over a garden right and who stands to benefit from the garden me i get to feed my family from my garden you know i get to feed the community from my garden my chickens feed from the garden and in turn they give eggs and my husband's got more than enough eggs right so god god's commands they are truly not grievous to us you know and and god god is not calling us to do something that is just way out of the ordinary god is calling us to the simple things god is saying there's a garden with weeds go remove the weeds you know that's where the blessing lies i'm remembering a book forgot the name and the author um but i think it's gloria ferman um uh, could be wrong but she says that christ is found in the mundane and that stuck with me right there taking out weeds that's where god is that's where blessing is take a moment to think about that i think of the ministry of jesus and i realized jesus jesus majored on the simple 
the ordinary, the mundane. You know, who are we to want to do the big things and, and skip on the little things when the Lord of all glory did both the great and the little things for our salvation, for, for the healing of the nations, right? And so I really stand sometimes and I ask myself, Lord, what great work do you want me to do for you? You know, I read about all those people that that were ministers of the gospel, that were missionaries. And, you know, I read about the likes of John Hyde, people who prayed until their hearts moved to the, to the right side of the chest. Extraordinary things. And I'm like, whoa, Lord, I, I want to do that for you. You know, I want to be that woman that, that, that did this great thing for you. But God stops me dead in my tracks and says to me, start with the little. Do the little so faithfully. Weed your garden faithfully. Tend to it like there's nothing else in the world that you care about. You know, clean your kitchen when your daughter messes it up. Without one word of complaint, ask for strength from me, says God. My strength is sufficient for you, he says. Ask for strength from me and clean up that kitchen. You know, my daughter likes reading and and that's a great thing, but not so great as well on my part because she wants to read all the time. We could sit for an hour and, and be reading for an hour, but she's only two, you know. There's only so much you can repeat of a book, right? But you know, God says... Take a break from the work. If the daughter wants to read, take time. Do the small thing. Forget cooking a three-course meal. Sit down and read about about Daniel. You know, sit down and and, and read about Jonah being swallowed by a fish and, and repeat the same phrases. You know? Because that's exactly where Christ would have us. That is exactly what Christ wants us to do. We, we accomplish the big things because we've been so faithful with the small things, with the mundane tasks, with the things that look like they don't matter, the things that grate our very skin. That is exactly where Christ says, here is where I want you to be. And so this reflection really, it's just a matter of starting the year on a note of it's okay to start with the small things. It's okay to do the Monday. Hey, it's heartbreaking to see your garden really messed up. But God gives strength to rebuild. God is teaching us. At least he taught me that the very thing that happened to my garden is exactly what happens every time I fall back. He is forever a willing gardener to come and take out the weeds and clean up and put up some compost for me and and, and water me and, and put up some mulch and help me bud up and spring up into the beauty that that he wants me to be that is what he does for us and that is what he would want us as christian mothers as christian fathers as as representatives of christ to do for him in this world to be the ones you know the bible says they shall call you the repairers of the breach that is exactly what christ wants us to be repairers of the breach you can only repair if you put one brick after the other a brick alone looks very small and insignificant but if you put one brick and the next and the next repeated a hundred bricks 
become something amazing. 200 bricks become something amazing. Before you know it, you've built a bridge. So I'm going to pray for myself and for all the homemakers who, like me, are starting the year slow and steady. Are starting the year without any big, humongous things going on. I want to pray. I want us to pray and and ask God to be our guide. And so I pray, dear God, that you help us. You placed us in this position to be makers of the whole. You placed us to be mothers on this earth. Not because we deserve it or we've done something spectacular but your mercy your grace your love towards us runs that deep oftentimes we try and run our own race and we forget that lord we can only do what we do when you extend that grace to us and you direct us to where your grace wants us to go I pray, dear Father, that you make us managers of the home that are not afraid to start over. That you make us mothers, women, that are okay with rebuilding what has been torn down. Society around us tells us that you cannot continue in this relationship, in this friendship, in this thing that you're doing. I mean, you've done it before. But Lord, you are teaching us that there are things that are vital to rebuild, to restart. I pray, Lord, you give us a spirit that is able to discern, to discern, Lord, where there is a necessity to rebuild and to not just jump over but to know that it is our responsibility to know that it is a command from you oh how I pray Father that as this year starts put it in our hearts to be okay and to be content in ministering through the small things to be with Christ in every little thing that we touch around our homes our gardens some our workers even our workplaces how I plead with you dear father that may we take time to sit at your feet and to ask of you what you would have us do and when we've heard it that we may have willing hearts to do it tedious scary boring as that may be give us the strength lord you have promised and we know that lord your promises are yes and amen and we believe that we believe in all of our heart father For you said through your son Jesus Christ that if you are able to give your children good gifts, what of your father in heaven? And so we come to you boldly because we know that you will not withhold that which is good from us. And what we ask of you right now, we know it is good for our characters. And so we ask Be our guide. Be our help. As we start this year, help us to walk in your footsteps. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, 
that's it from me right now may god keep you and bless you may he shine his countenance on you on you and and give you peace until the next time god bless bye